Hello, everyone. This is your Friendly Neighborhood Podcast. I'm Kyle Swope, and joining me is my co-host, Josh Myers. Today, we are going to discuss each other. So, Josh, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Kyle. How are you? Fantastic. I'm doing great myself. Thanks for asking. So, anyways, we put a little game together. Um, what we're going to do, episode one, you know, this is, this is big, this is important. So, what better way to introduce people to their co-hosts than to ask questions? Now, this is a superhero podcast, so they're all going to be some type of superhero-related questions. Any way you want to spin it, just go right ahead. So, Josh, you want to ask the first question? Yeah. All right. So, I start off with a basic one. Yeah. Uh, the question I'm asking you is, what are your top three favorite superhero movies? For movies. Okay. So, um, let me think about that. Fun fact, I actually have a list that I made on my phone. Of like, I took every superhero movie I've ever seen and I ranked it. Okay. So I'm just going to go to the list and read you off my top three. My third favorite is Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Third, The Dark Knight. And first, Batman. That's the 1989 Batman. With Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. And mm-hmm. I'm very biased toward that movie. It's like my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yes. And how about yourself? All right. So my top three, oh, man, I don't have a list. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say probably the Snyder Cut, the Justice League Snyder Cut. Oh, would have, yeah. It would have to be number one for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think number two, probably Civil War, Captain America Civil War. And then okay. three, we're going to go with Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh. And, uh, Kind of odd, but I, I love. Oh yeah, movie. quite honestly, though, I I don't understand why people like Far From Home better than Homecoming. Mm-hmm. It's like I love Homecoming. I think Far From Home is not a bad movie. Don't get me wrong, but for some yeah. reason, it doesn't hit as hard for me as Homecoming did. I think it's the opposite for me. Was, uh Homecoming didn't hit as hard, but Far From Home, I remember coming out of the theater, and I was like, "Wow, that was fabulous." <laughs> huh. That, that's a topic to be discussed later on but anyways yeah i'll ask you my first question if this is a super super basic one if you could choose one superpower which would it be oh man okay i've definitely thought of this before i'm gonna have to go with super speed um okay uh i'm a big fan of the flash um and so with his super speed he utilizes it to do different things you know like phasing through walls um and like you know limited invisibility is one where he goes super fast that you know no one can see him um Mm -hmm. so super speed i think there is you know multiple things you can you can do with it yeah so for me i would probably choose teleportation because i've also thought about this long and hard but teleportation i it would either be teleportation or super speed the thing that makes me pick teleportation first though is that it's, I guess you want to say it's more lazy, but just as effective in a lot of areas. Okay. So, like, with super speed, I mean, yeah, you can go some type of invisible. However, if you can teleport, you don't really need to. Yeah. Um, I also think of, like, Nightcrawler a lot. And, like, especially oh. that opening scene. You've seen X2, right? For sure. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So, my next question is what are your last three superhero movies like that you would that you would watch? Oh, so, okay. I'm going to go back to my list for this one. Yeah, we talked about the top three, but what are the last three that you would say, oh man, there's nothing else to watch? Okay. Three. Well, so th- these are a little more obscure, but here's what they are. So the third to worst, I have uh, Son of the Mask. Okay. That movie was very bad for a lot of reasons. Um, it's kind of funny, though, because uh, Jamie Kennedy, he was like the main person in that movie. Uh, he's an actor. He, he has his own his own YouTube channel, which I think has got some really good content on it. But yeah. he even admits that, like, Son of the Mask did not turn out well at all. <laughs> but I know it's very it's oh, man, it's like it's sort of hard to describe. It's like it sounds like it's a really good concept, but it's just horrible execution. That's just I think what happened there it's just it's not very good at all and then the yeah it's it's not very good 
The Death of the Incredible Hulk. Have you have you heard of that movie? The Death of the Incredible Hulk. Yes. No. Okay, so let me explain it to you. You're familiar with the uh, '70s Incredible Hulk live action TV series, right? Yes. Okay. Well, um, that show it ended, but then it had some television movies as like sequels. Okay. So it had like three or four movies. Um, I haven't like watched all of them, but I remember one day I was at Second and Charles. We found it on DVD for just a few bucks, and we were like, "Hey, this is awesome! This is the conclusion to the series, pretty much." And it is such a disappointing conclusion. Oh. <laughs> like, it's just kind of dull. And it gets, so, it's the death of the Incredible Hulk. So, obviously, he dies, right? And the way he dies is he falls out of an exploding helicopter and just hits the ground. And I'm <laughs> like, bruh, this is the Hulk we're talking about. That's so lame. In Avengers, you know, I think of, I think if I'm saying, I tried to swallow a bullet and the other guy spit it out. But here, he's he's dying. You know, he's falling out of a helicopter and dying. That's, you know, that's lame. That's boring. Superman 3 was terrible. Um, it was a huge mess. Uh, I literally had to Google afterwards who the comic bad guy was supposed to be. Because <laughs> the movie had bad guys. And that was, you know, very apparent. But, like, it was, it, just, it was so bad. Like, I don't think I can say anything else than that. It was just... Uh, yeah. I barely remember that movie. <laughs> okay, probably, I don't blame you. Probably because it was so bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, fun fact. In psychology, uh, your brain actively tries to forget uh, painful memories. So if you ask, you know, <laughs> most moms, most women who have uh, given birth children, they remember it hurting. They just don't remember what the pain 100% felt like. That's the same thing with Superman 3. I don't remember... How bad it was, I just remember it being so bad that I don't remember it. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was rough. But anyways, what are your three least favorite superhero films? Oh, man. So the last three superhero movies I would watch. Now, I haven't watched um, as many as you have. Um, there's still, you know, I have a list on HBO Max and all the different um, streaming services of different movies I have to watch. But I would, I would say the one, the three that I have seen that I would not want to watch again unless I really had to. Uh, I think the last one would be Green Lantern. Um, uh, awful movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, bad. They, wow. They, they could have had a good thing, but no, they threw a wrench in it. Um, oh. Yeah. And the next one would probably be um, The Dark Knight Rises. I remember. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a hot take right there. <laughs> For sure. Again, I haven't seen that many superhero movies, but uh, yeah, I would say that that one, I, I didn't even finish it. Mm -hmm. I, I borrowed it from a friend. I got home. I was excited to watch it because I enjoyed the first two so much. Mm -hmm. um, but halfway through, I was like, this not good so i turned mm -hmm. it off i will have to say it was a very very what's the term i'm looking for very subpar ending to the franchise yeah it's like it peaked right in the middle with the dark knight and then they for tried sure. following it up and they're like no nah, this isn't gonna work very well yeah i think another too is heath ledger's joker was going to be in it mm -hmm. um, but you know because he died <laughs> he wasn't in yeah it. Um, Which is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Yeah. And my last one, again, I haven't, this is, this isn't something I've thought about a whole lot. I probably have to say Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi. What? Okay. That is incredibly controversial. Explain yourself before I start crucifying you. I know it is. Oh man. Um, just the, the whole thing. Okay. Doc, Doc Ock, I, the, the actor's name is, I, I forget it at the moment, but he did fabulous. He was so good. Mm -hmm. Such such a good portrayal. Um, but just the whole thing with him losing his powers because, you know, he's stressed out or whatever. I just, that did not resonate with me at all. I was like, okay, this is a corny story plot. I, I want to see him getting back to swinging around and, you know, punching Doc Ock. Wow. <laughs> I did not enjoy it. And at the end, 
like, okay, I understand the arms were the thing that was corrupting his brain. Mm -hmm. But like, I just, my whole problem with that trilogy is at the end, a villain always turns good. <laughs> Green Goblin didn't though. I get, yeah, I guess that's right. But you know, the, the end of the second one, he's like, okay, you know what? The arms, they're just, they're making me go crazy. He's like, I realize my mistakes now. I'm going to throw the bomb in the lake. Okay. You know, that's, that's kind of lame. Mm -hmm. They ruined a, a great villain character arc in my opinion. And then the third one, um, it was, it was okay to see Sandman, you know, turn good after, you know, mm -hmm. whole twist of him actually killing uncle Ben being, you know, the crook who was involved in that. Um, I mean, they, you know, you also have Harry Osborn who helps Peter out after, you know, so yeah, I did not enjoy that trilogy as much as a whole. Um, but yeah, the second one just did not like it. <laughs> wow. I, I think, see, here's why that's so controversial. I think so if I'm ranking all the Spider-Man movies, um, I mean, the MCU movies are sort of controversial in a way because a lot of people think that they're good movies, but not good Spider-Man movies. That, I mean, that's another topic for another time. However, like Spider-Man 2, I used to like Spider-Man 3 the best when I was a kid growing up, watching them as they were coming out. Then the first Spider-Man, then Spider-Man 2, I didn't care for it a whole lot. But I think uh -huh. the more I got into like films and movies, and the more I realized what makes a good movie good, uh, Spider-Man 2 really grew on me. Mm -hmm. So I would debate. Now, it's not the most fun movie in that trilogy, but I would debate that in terms of movie and storytelling it is the best okay so i mean yeah like i don't know i still like it it's just not my favorite um they're they're good movies but they're not good spider-man movies see i would argue that for the christopher nolan batman trilogy they are good movies but they're mm. not they're not batman movies to which i would probably agree 100 percent. okay good i'm glad we can find common yeah. ground like they're fantastic they're awesome but oh, they yeah. don't represent the character in the best way yeah yeah but that's why i like the 1989 batman so much because that's what that movie does i feel like it represents the characters the most accurate we've seen them on screen yeah um I th that movie really nails the mythology of batman because that's what it oh is. yeah and you know it nails the mythology of gotham city you know with these big towering buildings and these you know big structures mm -hmm. um and you know just it it really nails that mythology and it it is a fantastic movie Oh, yes, definitely. Very good. That's why I love it so much. But uh, And I, I have some deeper, more nostalgic reasons why I love it, too. But, yes. So, anyway, uh, I'll move on to my next question. What is, in your opinion, the best non-DC or Marvel superhero? This can be from anything. It can be from a comic. It can be from some type of made-up uh, character from either a TV series or a movie, something like that. That is a very good question mm -hmm. <laughs> for you. Ask me. Oh, uh, yes. Because I do not really go out of DC or Marvel too much. Like, I really don't, like, at all. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say it's favorite superhero, but, like, favorite superhero film, per se, mm -hmm. is Megamind. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. The fantastic film. Mm -hmm. So good. Oh, my goodness. That movie... I grew up watching it. Like I, I was still watching. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so, so good. Just it really captures, you know, like I said before, like superheroes are a modern day mythology. It really captures that mythology, and it really for me, I think this isn't really a hero. It's more of a villain. Well, it's kind of it's complicated, but uh, I think my favorite non DC or Marvel character hero character would probably be Homelander from the Boys. Okay. Just because he's so screwed up, it's just so, it's such an interesting, I, the thing that makes it so interesting is he is like, he's got like a god complex going on. So he's like the head superhero of this evil organization. Um, okay. And he's got, he's got like a lot of trauma, but he feels like he is like above everyone. And so in order to save face and stay popular, he does this stuff to make him seem, you know, like a hero, some heroic stuff. But he is really a very screwed up, evil individual. And he's basically oh. the ultimate villain of the series. But he's technically a hero in that world. That's 
really cool. Oh, yes. It's just the way he's written, it's like he's so screwed up. He's just so interesting to watch all the time, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds that sounds fantastic. All right, so I can move on to my next question. Are you a comics fan? And, like, if so, what do you read? How much do you read? Like, how big is your collection? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I am a comics fan. Um, okay. Which is good because uh, I would not feel in a place to do this podcast if I wasn't a comics fan. Um, Very good. So I'm definitely a comics fan. Yeah. I just got off a of vacation, actually, and I brought a bunch of books with me. I have a hard time reading stuff when I don't have, like, time to travel. Right. Because that's what I do most of my reading. Right. Um, and I just finished reading Volume 2 of Superior Spider-Man. Oof. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a pretty good series thus far. Um, I finished Watchmen, finally. I started that, like, months ago. Actually, I started, like, a year ago. I just never got around to finishing it. So I finished it now. Um, it was pretty good. Very – not what I expected from the ending. I'll put it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very good. And then I am a huge fan of Red Hood, the character, okay? Yeah. And so I love Red Hood and the Outlaws, especially the Rebirth stuff. Okay. So I read through all the Rebirth stuff. Now I'm getting to, like, the post-Rebirth Red Hood and the Outlaws. Well, this series, it got rebranded to Red Hood Outlaw. Um, I'm not sure I like that as much, quite honestly, as uh-huh. with the Outlaws. Um, I feel like this made him extra edgy for, like, no real good reason, I feel like. <laughs> it's not explained very well. Uh, I do plan on like continuing to read the series. I just don't know if I'll stick around that much longer. I might just skip ahead, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's really good. And then I feel like the Rebirth launch in 2016 was really good in general. Especially like Rebirth The Flash Volume 1. That was a very good story. I will say, like modern Batman, I actually don't care for a whole lot, even though I'm a huge Batman fan. Yeah. Because... I don't know. I think the best Batman stories are before Batman is, like, as good as he is. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I like younger Batman stories. Okay, like um, Long Halloween. Yeah, stuff like that. And then I think, like, the Batman Telltale series, video games, I think that tells, both seasons, tells a really good young Batman story where he's coming yeah. across some of these villains for the first time and he's trying to figure out how does he get the better of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yes. But anyways, that's a that's a summary. I won't take too long because, you know, I can talk about comics for, like, ever. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess my turn. And I could I could talk for so long. I My collection just in the last year has grown so much. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually I'm looking at it right now and the majority of it over half I'd say is Batman. Oh yeah. I mean I am also a huge Batman fan. Um but yeah, it's mostly Batman. I have I have all three volumes of Nightfall and that's that is a very a very big chunk, you know, of the Batman. Mm-hmm. I have Azrael taking over. Oh um, yeah afterwards and that that was really good that was fantastic um also i love the flash um i have a lot of the new 52 flash i've read through not all of it but most of it um and that's very well written too um and back to batman i do have all of the new 52 the complete you know thing and i have oh scott snyder and with greg capala's art is just fabulous it's just fantastic so good um Mm -hmm. you know whenever i am whenever people ask me hey like what comics should i get started on i always 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 recommend scott snyder's batman i think you know that i i really like that that's batman in in his prime and i think he is the best batman writer that i have read so far now i i am still pretty new to the comics world um my year or my collection is only about a year old um but yeah it it's growing like oh yeah um i'm i'm the guy who will go into all these uh go over to their you know their book section and i'll pick up a whole bunch of novels for uh for like 20 dollars or something and oh yeah there and read through them and yeah it's great though and recently i'm reading um grant more grant morrison's first omnibus uh of batman Mm. so nice that's been that's been enjoyable for me. 
See, another thing for me in terms of comics, um, I have a hard time, like, for me, comics don't stimulate my mind as much, but I understand how important they are. So I have a ton of comic books that I just haven't read yet. Okay. Just sitting up in my collection. Yeah. And it's like, I need to get time to read this. And then it's just, yeah. So I got a ton of books I haven't even touched yet. But yeah, I, I have plenty of material to go for. Oh, yeah. I, I still do, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. A- anytime, you know, I'm close to Ollie's, I always just have to stop by. And, you know, it's it's an addiction at this point. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <just> back. <laughs> Which Robin is superior? Ooh. Wow. Okay, this is a very good question because I recently, um, in Grant Morrison's Omnibus, it, it includes uh, Batman and Son. It includes that storyline. Yeah. I have, um, I've read, you know, about Damian Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually haven't read uh, the Red Hood story where he comes back. Oh um, yeah, under the red hood. The red hood. Yeah, I really need to get to that. I it's it's part of my online collection, so I can I'll re- I'll read it soon. But anyway, um, I hate Damian Wayne. He's a very well written character because I hate him so much. Wow. Um, but he is probably my least favorite. <laughs> oh man, that is a that is a tough question though. Mm-hmm. Um. I'll probably have to go with Tim Drake um, just because I've read more of mm-hmm. him. Um, he's the one I probably resonate with more. Uh, smart guy. He's very smart. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tim Drake is fabulous. Um, I just think of Nightfall. Um, mm-hmm. How, you know, when he had to team up with Azrael. Um, he just instantly was like, okay, no, this guy is not okay as Batman. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, you know, even after Azrael kicks him out of the Batcave, he still goes on and does his own work. And that's really cool to me. Um, mm-hmm. And then you get, you, you have uh, Dick Grayson who does, you know, take the Batman mantle in that Nightfall uh, storyline. And, you know, they just, they work so well together too. Um, Tim Drake and Dick Grayson. I just, I really like that. Um, and also identity crisis, Tim Drake, a lot of character growth in that one too. Yeah. He, he is probably my favorite Robin. And then, you know, Dick Grayson's cool. Jason Todd is really cool too. Um, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta go with Tim Drake. Okay. Gotcha. Huh. For me personally. So like I say how much I love Red Hood. I love Red Hood. Probably he's my favorite host Robin Robin. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, however, as Robin, uh, Jason Todd's probably the bottom of my list, quite honestly. Actually, him or Damian Wayne. Not to throw Damian under the bus. Like, I agree with you. He's very well-written. I'm just not a big fan of him. I don't hate him. I'm just not a big fan. (laughs) No, throw him under the bus. He deserves it. Wow. But, yeah. So, I'm not a big Damian Wayne fan. Not a big Jason Todd fan as Robin, anyways. Yeah. Um, As for... So, it's got to be either Tim Drake or... Dick Grayson. And I'm not including like Stephanie Brown and stuff who had really short Robin runs yeah. because, you know, yeah, it's just, it's not worth bringing up, I feel like. I'm just acknowledging <laughs> yeah. that I know that so people don't think I'm some type of loser. But anyways, yeah. um, yeah. So, I don't know, because I think I'd have to say Dick Grayson. Okay. Just because I don't know. I feel like Dick Grayson kind of had a good dynamic with Bruce Wayne anyways, because Bruce Wayne was, you know, he was like a dark character out for vengeance, whereas Dick Grayson was like a lost boy, so to speak, who found Batman. It's kind of like an outlet to help him not become like Batman, I guess. So he was like a more chipper, I guess, more look on the bright side of things compared to Batman's dark and grimly, which created a bit of like a yin yang effect in a way. Yeah. Like a balance. For I think sure. that worked really good. And then I also think the dynamic, like, I will say, this is sort of a random plug, but the show Titans, I think it does a lot of really good work with both Dick Grayson and Jason Todd. I was just the, about to have you watched Titans. Um, I have, Yeah, I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet. I'm like midway through season two. I have a hard time binging stuff. Yeah. But yeah, they do a lot of good work with both uh, J- 
Jason Todd and Tim Drake. But one thing that happens in the comics, a lot of people kind of like fail to realize is that Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne did have a falling out, which caused him to leave. And he was still Robin for a while, independent of Batman. And just like in the show Titans, Batman went ahead and got a new Robin while there were still like two Robins for a short time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Dick Grayson took up Nightwing and became Nightwing and all that jazz. But I think, yeah, I think that's like a small, interesting nook and cranny of the comic book, the DC Universe, that they cover in Titans that does not get enough light shed on it. Okay. So I think that's really good. But yeah, overall, I guess I'd probably say Dick Grayson. And of course, Nightwing is very solid, too, on his own. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. In your opinion, whose parents had a bigger influence on, like, the hero they would become? Batman or Superman? So let me explain a little bit. So you look at Batman's origin. You look at Superman's origin. In both of their origin stories, their parents play a huge role. Um, you know, Batman's parents, they were killed, you know, mm -hmm. by, that caused him to wage war on crime. The Superman, um, this is something I've recently come to a realization of, um, like he's super powerful. He's, he's like all powerful in the DC universe, right? Yeah. Parents, you know, raised him with good values and you look at stories like Red Sun and uh, Earth One, kind of, not really though. Um, where, you know, he didn't, he wasn't raised with, you know, those good values. You know, well, mm -hmm. yeah, especially in Red Sun, because you know he lands not in Kansas. <laughs> um, yeah, like a dictator. <laughs> so, whose parents, in your opinion, had a bigger influence on who they would become? Yes. Well, that's a very interesting question. One I've never actually really thought about. Yeah. Well, because here's kind of the thing. Superman had four parents, if you sit and think about it. Okay. Because he had his birth parents from Krypton. And, you know, obviously his dad with the whole thing in the Fortress of Solitude and the crystals, um, he was able to connect with them, I guess, in a way. Even though he was technically dead. And then he had the Kents. But here's yeah. the thing. Superman technically had four parents then. Batman had two. And I feel like Batman's like track of life was set with the death of both of his parents as opposed to Superman's four. Therefore, if you look at it like that, I feel like Batman's parents were more impactful for who Batman became to be because he had less of them. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where my mind goes. That's good. Um, you know, I think I would agree with that. Um, because he, you know, his, like you said, he only had his parents for a short amount of time, and it was more mm -hmm. the trauma of one event is what you know set him off, um, in, in, into becoming Batman. Whereas Superman, you know, um, you know, as you read comics, he still talks to his parents or, you know, his his mom, you know, because his his dad uh, dies, but mm -hmm. you know, I would agree with that because. He had the one time Batman had the one time thing where Superman is still being influenced by his parents. What is your favorite comic book television series? This can be cartoon, live action, doesn't matter. Oh man. That that's a good question. Um Wow, I really have to think about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna go with something a little crazy. Okay. You might, you might think I'm kind of crazy for saying this, but Stargirl. Really? Yes. Huh. Fantastic. I crazy, but... Stargirl was so good. <laughs> huh. I actually haven't watched Stargirl yet. Yeah, I don't think it looks bad. I just haven't, like, watched it personally just because it just didn't seem super interesting to me initially. Yeah, it's... Wow. I really enjoyed it. Um, you just so you start off with you know the JSA fighting the ISA, and you know they they come to their headquarters, and the ISA kills all of them, and that's that's the opening scene. So oh, I wow. remember there, like petrified and shocked. I was like, "What? Like 
what just happened? <laughs> um, and then, you know, it goes forward a couple years. Um, and you got, you know, the lead characters and one of them is named, yeah, Pat. Um, and he was star man's like sidekick. Mm -hmm. Um, Stripesy was his name. Um, and he, you know, he's keeping, keeping it a secret. Um, but then, uh, Cassie, who's star girl finds star man's like staff, you know, it kind of comes to her, um, kind of like Thor's hammer, kind of like a worthy thing in a way. Um, but so then Pat ends up like telling Cassie, you know, about the JSA and what happened and everything. So, you know, she gets the idea to recruit more members. So um, she goes, you know, back to the headquarters, gets all the gear, um, you know, gets wi- Wildcat's suit, Dr. Midnight's um, costume and uh, our man's thing and, you know, all, all this other stuff. Um, I think they're going to use more of it. Um, in season two, but you know, the rest of the show, she's recruiting JSA members because, you know, the ISA is still out there and she actually, she has an encounter with one of them and she goes, you know, I can't do this by myself. Um, Hmm. and yeah, I really enjoyed it overall. Um, interesting. Yeah. And I think if I were to say, if I were to say my number two or maybe even number one, I would have to go with the flash. Oh yeah. Like the at least the first the first three seasons of it. Um, I'm say season three though that's pretty controversial. I think. Really. Yeah, because in my in my opinion, season three is when it took its first big dip. I okay, in quality. I, I would wait to say season four, but that's just mm. me. Um, season three again just shocked me. You know. Mm. Uh, Iris, you know they they're predicting her death. Like the whole season, it's just this impending doom. Okay, Iris is gonna die. How are we gonna save Iris? You know, because mm-hmm. there's no Barry, there's no Flash without Iris. You yeah. Know, I, that episode where they <laughs> Savitar just comes to the portal, stabs her through the heart, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And I, I like couldn't sleep that night. I was like, oh my goodness. I just thinking of all the possibilities is like how could that happen there's no way that like actually you know wow yeah i see what you mean but i mean i i, I would debate from a whole nother perspective but for sake of time i'm not going to do that but okay. okay yeah so i would probably pick for my favorite series of all time i'm kind of in a toss-up between two different cartoons um one of these might come as a shock because it's not one anyone really. Not that people don't remember it, but it's not it's not held as like one of the greatest cartoons of all time, anyways. But it's a toss up between both Young Justice and The Batman, and here's kind of why I say. I'm just gonna say why I like both series. I can't choose one from the other. All right. But The Batman. I'll start with that one because that's the that's the lesser known one, I suppose. I liked it because, again, I mentioned this previously, it's a younger Batman story. So yeah. the show starts on his like third year anniversary of being Batman. Um, and through the progression of the show, you get to see him, like I mentioned before, coming up against these villains for the first time who are all redesigned. A lot of the redesigns are really good. Some, eh, uh, like the Riddler, he's just kind of strange. But Firefly, they kind of set a new standard for Firefly as a villain in that show, which is yeah. pretty awesome. Um, but I love that a lot. And then obviously as it goes on too, um, we get to see Batman getting his sidekicks and they actually do something interesting. They introduce Batgirl first instead of Robin. Oh yeah. Which is a really nice twist. There's actually a legal reason why they couldn't have Robin come in first, but both teen Titans when that was going on and the Batman were on Cartoon Network. So when teen Titans ended, they were like, okay, you can use Robin now because they're done using him. So that's why they brought Robin in later than Batgirl. Very interesting. Oh, yes. And then, like, the last season is sort of like a Brave and the Bold season because at the end of season four, he gets uh, introduced to the Justice League. Uh huh. That uh, I guess it forms with Adam in this series, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, I think it's a really good series. It's just so different, so unique. I like it. Um, and there's some really creative episodes and stories as well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, really good. I highly recommend. As you were talking, I was thinking, I thought of a show, and I think I want to change my answer, but 
Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll talk about Young Justice. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, Young Justice. Have you watched Young Justice? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. Young Justice is pretty great, um, especially the first season. The first season stands head and shoulders above all other seasons. I feel like. I mean, there's only three seasons thus far, yeah. but. Yeah, it's so good because you just get to see a whole new side of, you know, like the Justice League and stuff. Yeah. Which, speaking of the Justice League in that series, the way that they have the Justice League, I think is one of the best, most practical depictions of it, like, ever. Yes, 100%. Exactly, because the Justice League in that series, we have people, like, it's huge. But the idea is, if something bad happens somewhere, they deploy the closest heroes, since they're all stationed all over the world. Yeah. Um, which just makes a whole lot of sense. And then, you know, yeah. I can... I feel like I cannot just rant and rave about it without getting into deep story details and why it's so good, which I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's listening who hasn't watched it yet. But take my word. It's basically like, from the sidekick's perspective, having a team that operates within the Justice League it's just it's 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 so good and the storytelling. Oh it's man! Not, oh yeah! It, but season one is definitely the best of the three seasons thus far. Yeah, I think I but, stopped time into season three. I was like, this isn't the same show it was, and I just didn't like it. I think it's they, worth at least finishing out. Okay, they were doing all this stuff with the outsiders, and I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. But yeah, see, season three was season two and three kind of had the same problem. Where they had a lot of characters, they only focused on like two or three of them, uh, and that has made some very just seems kind of strange story calls. Yeah, like it's still good. It's just kind of like, why did they decide to do this exactly? Yeah, although I will say, season two again, another jaw dropping moment. Um, you know, right at the end there, <laughs> the finale. Oh yeah, again, we're not going to spoil it, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. That yeah. was sad. So good. Um, you know, as we were talking, though, I thought of another show. I thought of another series. Um, now this, I think a lot of people would agree with me in saying this, but I think, I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but I'd say this is the best TV series, superhero TV series, probably ever. Um, Daredevil. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I still haven't watched through Daredevil. It's just... You gotta do it. Yeah, it's just... The beginning is just so slow for me. Okay. It's like, that's just what... I have such a hard time. I've seen, like, the first, like, three or four episodes. But it's just... It's too slow of a burn, if that makes sense. The first season... First couple of episodes are slow. But once they introduce Fisk, it it picks up. I think it's episode Hmm. five. So I I would encourage you to keep watching, and then you know, season two. Um, I think most people would agree in me saying that it finds a little bit, you know, it it starts, um, but it's still it's still fantastic. But then season three, oh my goodness, they really tried there. Season three is fantastic, so good. Oh yeah, well I feel like all those Netflix shows seem to have gotten canceled way too soon. Yeah. All the Netflix Marvel shows. Because, well, I, I don't know why exactly they got canceled. But there's a lot of legal stuff as to why. They were supposed to be MCU originally, but now it's questionable whether or not that they're canon. Uh-huh. But um, anyways, yeah. Kevin, in an interview, he did say, you know, nothing is impossible. Like, they could still mm-hmm. show. Uh, maybe this is a topic for another episode someday, but... Mm-hmm. You know, have I have some theories as to where you know, like Jessica Jones and Matt Murdock go up? Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. I, I they're done with those characters. Oh, yeah. Well, some people believe, and this is, this is sort of a sneak peek for the next episode, but some people, and I'm sort of speculating on this too, think that we're going to get to see Matt Murdock appear in Spider Man No Way Home. Yeah, I in the trailer. There, there is a, there is a part where a man slams files down on the table, and I think that mm-hmm. man is Matthew Murdock. Now, I don't know if we're gonna see him in costume as Daredevil, but to have him, you know, at least show his face would be huge. 
Um, I mean, you know, the, the fanboy in me wants, you know, him and Spider-Man to team up and, you know, beat up a whole bunch of thugs on the street. But I don't think mm-hmm. we're going to I don't think we're going to get there yet. But I do think something like that is a possibility for the future. Definitely. And we'll talk more about that in the next episode. Yeah. But I think with that, we're going to come to a close. So thank you guys all for joining us. This is your friendly neighborhood podcast. This is Kyle Swope signing off. Josh, you want to sign off? All right. Yeah, we'll see you guys. All right. Yep. See you all next episode, which we're going to be talking about the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Once again, thanks for joining us. We will catch you all next time.